400 years ago, on a chilled night on January 8, 1610, an inquisitive Italian astronomer named Galileo Galilei pointed his homemade telescope on the night sky to research. What he saw would change humanity's view of the universe forever. He saw not one, not two, but four glimmering points of light orbiting the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. These four glimmering points were identified as moons. These moons, later named Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa, were bigger than our moon. Each a world unto itself. Each orbited Jupiter in silent cosmic precision. In that single critical instant, he realized Earth wasn't the center of all motion in the universe after all. This was proof that the heavens held mysteries far beyond our humble imagination. This is where Jupiter's Europa icy moon's journey begins with humans. Before we continue, join us as we journey beyond Earth's horizons. You won't want to miss a single update as we edge closer to answering the question, are we alone? More than 360 years after Galileo's discovery, our thirst for knowledge sent us back to these moons, this time armed with advanced spacecraft designed to show us Jupiter in a flamboyant display of detail. On March 2, 1972, NASA launched the Pioneer 10, the first probe from Earth to break through the asteroid belt into the realm beyond. The Pioneer spacecraft provided images of Jupiter's swirling atmosphere with the highest resolution of about 200 miles, clearly showing such landmarks as the Great Red Spot and first detected its powerful magnetic field. Based on the data, scientists identified plasma in Jupiter's magnetic field. The mission was declared on January 2, 1974. It was not long afterward that Pioneer 11, a sister spacecraft to Pioneer 10, launched on April 6, 1973, and entered on December 3, 1974, into Jupiter's flyby. Return the first pictures of the polar regions of Jupiter and even more spectacular shots of this gas giant and hinted at the complex beauty of its moons. Then, in 1977, NASA launched Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, designed to go farther than any previous spacecraft. By 1979, these twin explorers had reached Jupiter. Voyager 1 began studying Jupiter in April 1978 at a range of 165 million miles. Images showed Jupiter's atmosphere to be more turbulent than during the Pioneer 10 and 11 flybys. Voyager 1 took a picture every 96 seconds to create a time-lapse movie of this approach, sent back spectacular images that showed a far more detailed pictorial representation of its moons, and of Europa in particular. The spacecraft discovered two new moons, Thebe and Matis. Unlike Voyager 1, Voyager 2 made close passes to the Jovian moons on its way into the system, with scientists especially interested in more information from Europa and Io. During its encounter, it relayed back spectacular photos of the entire Jovian system, including its moons Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, Io, and Amalthea, all of which had already been surveyed by Voyager 1. For the first time, we saw Europa's surface in detail, a smooth, icy expanse with massive cracks running across it like veins of crystal. So scientists believed there must be an ocean under the icy expanse. On October 18, 1989, NASA launched the Galileo spacecraft's most ambitious mission, designed to explore the mysteries of Jupiter and its moons. Six years after launch, Galileo reached Jupiter in December 1995. The spacecraft's probe discovered that Jupiter's atmosphere contains less water than expected and detected powerful storms with wind speeds reaching 330 miles per hour. Later, Galileo revealed evidence that Europa beneath its icy crust might harbor a global ocean of liquid water. This discovery fueled speculation that Europa could potentially host life. Later beneath that frozen shell, something truly exceptional was suspected by scientists, an ocean the size of anything imaginable, buried under a thick layer of ice. In 2011, the Juno spacecraft was launched to continue the study of Jupiter. After its arrival in 2016, it probed even deeper into the secrets of Jupiter, revealing information concerning its magnetic fields, polar storms, and even the interior structure. But close flybys from Juno brought us some of the most tantalizing hints of all Europa's icy crust seemed to show evidence of water vapor plumes shooting up into space, almost like geysers on Earth. Was this frozen world, nearly 390 million miles from the sun, hiding one of the largest oceans in the solar system? And more importantly, could it support life? Think about an ocean beneath miles of ice, heated up by the gravitational pulls of the moon itself, teeming with forms of life, yet unknown in a world we've hardly begun to explore. What lies beyond the frozen surface of Europa? 
Can it be that humanity is right on the brink of the single greatest discovery ever, or will end like a space odyssey? Yes, Arthur C. Clarke had a sequel to 2001, A Space Odyssey. It's called 2010, Odyssey 2. And at the end of it, an alien intelligence converts Jupiter into a star. As a group of astronauts narrowly escape from the implosion, then they receive the following message from the aliens. All these worlds are yours except Europa, attempt no landing there. Now that was just a novel, but it suggests that already in 1982, we suspected that Europa might offer our best chance of finding alien life in the solar system. In October 2024, NASA took a bold leap towards solving a long-standing mystery. The Europa Clipper mission, the newest and most advanced probe ever aimed at Europa, launched with a mission to travel deep into our solar system, face Jupiter's intense radiation, and conduct highly detailed flybys of Europa Europa's icy surface. But Clipper's journey won't be easy. The trip will take nearly six years, pushing through some of the harshest conditions in the solar system to reach a place where water may lie beneath the ice, warmed by Jupiter's gravitational pull. As it nears Jupiter, Clipper will encounter one of the largest, most powerful magnetic fields in the solar system. Jupiter's radiation belts are extreme, nearly 10,000 times stronger than Earth's. Clipper will be hit with intense radiation as it navigates Jupiter's magnetosphere, a turbulent, invisible storm of high-energy particles. NASA designed Clipper to withstand this, sheltering it in layers of titanium and advanced radiation-resistant systems. Once there, Europa Clipper will carry out a series of close flybys, coming as near as 16 miles from Europa's surface. The Europa Clipper mission is planned to perform nearly 50 close flybys of Europa. Each of the flybys enables Europa Clipper to gather high-resolution data about the surface, ice shell, and any water vapor plumes that may exist on the Moon, plus its subsurface ocean. The tech the technique of repeated flybys also minimizes exposing the spacecraft to the intense radiation from Jupiter, since radiation around Jupiter is too high for a continuous orbit around Europa itself. But it's not just survival that Clipper is equipped for. It's fitted with some of the most advanced scientific instruments ever sent into deep space. Clipper's suite of tools will analyze Europa's surface in extraordinary detail. Ice-penetrating radar will scan miles beneath the crust, hunting for pockets of water or signs of liquid lakes. Infrared and ultraviolet cameras will map the surface, searching for chemical signatures that might point to complex molecules or even signs of life. One of the most exciting targets, Europa's water vapor plumes. Scientists believe these massive jets erupt through cracks in the ice, releasing material from the hidden ocean below into space. If Clipper can capture samples of these plumes, it might reveal direct evidence of Europa's ocean chemistry and potential for life. In the depths of Earth's oceans, where life thrives thousands of feet below the surface, sunlight never reaches, and oxygen is scarce. Here, hydrothermal vents release superheated, mineral-rich water at over 700 degrees Fahrenheit, creating robust ecosystems filled with remarkable organisms like tube worms, crabs, and unusual bacteria. But how do these species survive in such extreme environments? Unlike photosynthesis, they rely on chemosynthesis. Bacteria here transform chemicals from the vents, such as hydrogen sulfide, into energy, supporting entire ecosystems. If Europa has similar hydrothermal vents beneath its thick ice layer, these same life-supporting chemical processes could sustain microbial life. Earth's deep-sea life may actually offer us a glimpse into what life on Europa could look like. An ocean beyond Earth in our solar system, holding more water than all our oceans combined, possibly teeming with microbial life. Imagine that. Is it possible to uncover the signs of life nestled in the huge, dark ocean of a distant moon? Subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on Europa Clipper's mission as we unpack each new discovery that comes back from this incredible journey. While it may take years, the rewards could grow way beyond our wildest imagination. So set the date for 2030, when the Europa Clipper will begin its flybys, and we get our first close-up glimpse into the secrets of Europa's ocean. We shall see what Europa will yield.